Hello and welcome to the OC Varsity Gridiron Show, Week 9. I'm your host, Jonathan Camus. I'm being joined by Steve Fryer to my left and Dan Albano to my right. We're at Buena Park High School. We are going to preview the Coyotes game against Sunny Hills in the OC Varsity Gridiron Extra. But until then, this is the regular Gridiron Show and we're going to talk about our stars of Week 8. Steve, who do you got this week? Orange Lutheran running back Dominic Goss ran for 233 yards and a touchdown about 32 carry, something like that. Just a very busy night. Big Trinity League win for Orange Lutheran over Servite. I got Jacob Magookin of Westminster, the 6'1", 220-pounder, guys. He had five touchdowns and a 35-27 win over Orange. Dan, defense, who is it? Yeah. You know, I had a heck of a time last couple weeks picking a defensive player of the week. This was no different, but I'm going to go spotlight here. Cedric Daschle, uh, defensive end from Buena Park. These Coyotes right here, got to give it up to the uh, the local boys. Five and a half sacks, double digit um, uh, total tackles for Cedric in in their you know historic victory against La Habra. They break a 47 game league winning streak by the Highlanders, so we'll give it up to Cedric. Yeah, we'll talk about that more on the Gridiron Extra Show, but until then, let's talk Trinity League, guys, where Mater Day and Servite are going head-to-head -head once again at Angel Stadium. First of all, guys, I want to get your thoughts on Mater Day's big victory against St. John Bosco. Mater Day defeating Bosco 26-21, heading into this matchup against Servite, where Servite hasn't beat Mater Day since 2011. Yeah, well, that game, uh, that bosco Mater Day game was something and really, like a lot of us thought, it was going to be a field position battle. And certainly, Ryan Stonehouse, 50.4 yards per punt. Holy mackerel. You know, pinned Bosco back an awful lot. I, I was on the Bosco sidelines, and they were all amazed about yeah. his kicking ability. Yeah, this rain that came a couple days in the last couple days, Ryan Stonehouse <laughs> created that by kicking that ball up into the clouds some. But pretty, pretty great performance by him. Chase McGrath, of course, a great kickoff guy. No touchbacks, you know. Uh, and I think modern day's defensive guys played assignment football because, as we know, when you saw that quarterback Mitchell, when he got the corner, fellas, he was he was going to go go a distance. So a lot of it was really good assignment football guys doing their jobs. Yeah, and quickly your thoughts on that modern day victory against Bosco before we talk about the game against Servite. I thought the Monarchs were really hungry. You know, they really they just showed the desire. You know, to, you know, shut them out. The defense arrived in the fourth quarter. Second half they were playing better. Uh, Almond Rod St. Brown, that kickoff return, I think, it was a spark. Gave, uh, gave them some hope. Big interception by uh, Jalen Cole. That was gigantic. And, uh, you know, some sophomores emerged. You know, JT Daniels. You know, I think, you know, the thing that stands out the most is, you know, JT had a kind of a quiet night. But the defense picked him up. Shakobi Harper, sophomore, yeah. he was tough. You know, Raphael Jones gave him a spark running it. So, you know, modern day showed that they were a complete team, even when their star quarterback had a kind of quiet night. So I found out I found out late in the night that JT might, Daniels might not have been 100% healthy. May have been de dealing with some kind of flu bug or something like that. Okay, well, so uh, him going out. And by the way, that one throw he made, guys. Oh my gosh, where he's like rolling left, didn't even plant himself and threw it anyway. Holy, yeah. wow. Yeah. yeah, he's pretty special. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, Servite they lost to Orange Lutheran last yeah. week, 49-42. What a shootout. Lytle had uh, three touchdowns passing and a touchdown rushing. I think he's all kinds of talented guys. Uh, Dan, I'll, well, yeah. I'll talk to you first. Though, you know, what does Servite have to do to beat the behemoth known as Modern Day? Well, they, they got to watch the turnovers because that's what really did hurt, hurt them. You know, Brandon McKinney had two interception returns for touchdowns yeah, in that game, number 21 there for Orange Lutheran. So, yeah. Servite, you know, you know, how do they attack modern day's defense? I mean, it's the Servite's really struggled running the ball in the Trinity League. You look at all their games, they haven't rushed it much at all. And Lytle's starting to get going, but um, and they have some talented receivers. But uh, you're going to play for fi with some fire. You know, uh, Bosco didn't really throw it that well against uh, Modern Day in the second half. So maybe they see a little bit of the opening that, uh, you know, Real Mitchell showed him a little bit. You know, he threw for about 100 yards in the first half. Maybe that's something ca they can capitalize. And they're obviously going to have to play some better defense. Servite have a shot, Steve? Well, everybody's got a shot. That's what makes it fun, yeah. you know. That's but why they play the games. That's exactly, exactly the that's why the cliche is out yeah. there. But they did not play a perfect game. They got to be able to run the ball. They had, I was what, 0 0.7 yards of carry against Lutheran. And uh, so, you know, if you're a modern day, you're just going to tee off on Lytle and just go after him. So it's, it's going to be kind of a tough one. The only thing, you know, modern day, where are they at emotionally? Are they emotionally spent after the big Bosco win? So maybe it's a, the trap game, like people call it. I got a feeling this modern day team is just so businesslike. They're kind of loosey goosey, funny group. But man, you know, once that clock starts ticking down from 12 to 11.59 and on, 
their business thing. I, I think they'll win. Rawlinson called them a bunch of goofballs, but a bunch of bunch goofballs. Of goofballs. Yeah, they're a bunch of goofballs that might go undefeated and win CIF. Yeah. All right, Crestview League time, guys. Yep. Both teams are 7-1 and one in Villa Park and Yorba Linda. Villa Park at Yorba Linda. Guys, Yorba Linda beat Foothill last week 27-9. Ricky Lane had 91 yards receiving. And Villa Park beat Canyon 25-14, shutting out Canyon in the second half. Dan, your thoughts on this Crestview battle? Well, Luke Wilson, the quarterback at uh, Yorba Linda, is doing a nice job. You know, this is uh, a, a intriguing game. You know, they, they both have one good common opponent that I, I respect, I think everybody respects, is El Medina. And mm -hmm. El Medina beat Yorba Linda, Villa Park beat El Medina. So that's yeah. an interesting one. But, you know, the thing I think about this is, I think this is a great make, a rivalry in the making. The last couple years, this could be a really a great, you know, North County rivalry. Um, and maybe Yorba Linda can make it competitive. But right now, you know, they've actually played once in CIF. They had a, in 2012, the year that um, Bill Park uh, was a runner up to Edison. Um, they played in the playoffs 21-12, and that was a Bill Park victory. Um, but uh, the last couple ones haven't been that close. But uh, maybe this can be a good one and maybe a starting of a, a good North uh, County rivalry. Yeah, let's hope so. Villa Park has won the last two years, Steve. Well, they also got John Stamos on their side of Villa Park, and that guy's a one-man wrecking machine both on offense and two, defense. Two touchdowns, 173 yards rushing. Yeah, and he's, and he seems like one of those guys who just gets stronger as the year goes on. He's just getting warmed up, you know. So, yeah, I like Villa Park in this game a lot, and Sipe is a heck of a quarterback. That guy's got a da dangerous arm. Finally, Brethren Christian at St. Margaret's, guys, another uh, two 7-1 uh, and one teams. Um, BC, they beat Korean Lutheran last week 28-21. Brett Nash Jr. had two interceptions, but Jordan Leonard hurt his knee in the first quarter. He did come back in the second half, only had one play, but, man, if Jordan Leonard's out, you know, could spell trouble, Dan. I have called over to Brethren Christian today, haven't heard back on the update, so hopefully I'll get something on the OC Varsity blog on Jordan Leonard. This should, uh, this should have been for the Freeway League title, but now it's, uh, but hey, it's something better. I mean, not the Freeway, the Academy League title. Yeah. Should have been for the Academy yeah. League title, yeah. but they're freelance. Yeah. Get my freeze uh, correct. But, <laughs> you know, the, uh, the best thing about it is that maybe it's the unofficial uh, Orange County title for small school supremacy. The winner of this game so. can call themselves the best small school in Orange County. What do you think, fellas? Well, I think that uh, Dan got messed up on the free thing because we got free Buena Park shirts. Oh, boy from the Coyotes, which we can't accept. No, you anyway, cannot guys. because, uh, you know, we're journalists. You know, it's, what Danny's saying is right. Harbor right after this. <laughs> 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 you guys might be journalists. But anyway, um, you know what? It is a shame that there's not a league thing going on here, but it's still a big game. Mm -hmm. And where this game is really important, fellas, for me is that is that it's there's a lot of playoff seating that's going to be in, uh, you know, involved in this game. Where are you going to turn out in the brackets? So this game is still pretty big in terms of where we're going to slot these teams in their brackets. You know, I don't think Brethren Christian, according to my research, has, has they, they've never beaten St. Margaret's, at least since 2004. So No, the, the Tartans have owned the Academy League. Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely owned it, but they've gotten close. They've gotten really close, and there's a, yeah. there was a time, it was a, the last year, the year before, that Brethren was up, and then St. Margaret's rallied. The year that Brethren, uh, the year that St. Margaret's got to the state most recently mm -hmm. under Coach Barbie, I think that was two years ago when they played at, at over at Home Depot. The uh, Brethren almost got him that year. Home Depot Center, not actually Home Depot. Yeah. But yeah. that would have been really cool, though. You know, <laughs> Maybe everyone walks away with some flashlights, Steve. And lumber. Yeah, can't go wrong with that. All right, thanks to Steve Fryer. Thanks to Dan Albana for all your latest football updates. Check us out at ocvarsity.com all weekend where we've got you covered.